Torchlight Frontiers is the sheer definition of a work-in-progress game. It is buggy and bare-bones, but it is also one of the most exciting prospects in recent years for fans of hack-and-slash games. Runic Games' take on the tried-and-tested Diablo formula was always competent, deep, and above all fun. Torchlight Frontiers developer Ektra Games is putting player feedback to great use. After a few alphas where some unpopular features have been scrapped, while others were added. The first thing that comes to mind when talking about Torchlight Frontiers is the horizontal progression system. This is a way of making every frontier valuable and replayable. As you complete quests and defeat monsters, you level up each frontier separately and gain access to better gear. Early on, you can access both the Goblin Frontier and the Hivid Frontier. Your character levels up independently for each frontier, and most of the loot is specific to each frontier as well. This means that a weapon that works great against goblins won't be as useful when you are attacking those disgusting bugs. Juggling those gear sets is huge, and that is why the wardrobe system was created. Wardrobes are used to swap gear sets instantly according to your next destination. With one click, you can swap your fire-based gear set with your poison-based weapons and armor, adapting to the frontier that you will be venturing next. The Torchlight Frontiers Alpha offers two classes, the Dusk Mage and the Forged. The Sentient Teapot has a steam bar to release a special attack, while the Dusk Mage must balance light and dark skills for optimal effect. I'm hoping that the number of classes will steadily grow before the official launch. Your character will have a loyal pet by his side. You can choose between the ever-faithful dog, the alpaca, and the owl. Not quite the most battle-hardened creatures ever, but they won't mind lending you a hand in battle. However, they are mainly used as a very convenient secondary inventory. You can send them to town to sell unnecessary items. Pets are a great distraction when it comes to large mobs or dungeon bosses, so don't underestimate them. The way that the pet animation glitches during the alpha is bonkers, but pay no attention, it should be fixed soon. The Torchlight Frontier's design includes both public areas and private dungeons, with limits of 8 players and a party of 4 players respectively. Frontiers can be best described as spokes on a wheel, independent pathways that the player can discover leveled up separately. The current level cap is level 50 for each frontier. The Alpha brought the two frontiers that everyone already knew of, Goblin Forest and Hivid Colony. Some official screenshots hint at a Viking or Barbarian frontier. Let's wait and see what kind of surprises they have in store for us. While there aren't any major differences in gameplay between frontiers, there are a couple of features that deserve to be highlighted. In the Goblin Frontier, the forest is mostly inhabited by little goblins during the day. However, as soon as the night comes, skeletons make up the majority of the enemies. And it felt like night also brought an increase in numbers and aggressiveness, as well as better loot. But I can't say for sure if this was a mere coincidence. As for the Hivid Frontier, apart from the slimier looks, it adds some environmental hazards where you must time your pacing right. As you go on your journey, you will stumble across resources such as logs, ore, and stone. Harvest these whenever possible, as you can construct specific buildings and devices in your fort. Your fort is your home sweet home. The housing system in Torchlight Frontiers where you can build useful structures and decorate it with tons of clutter. You will have to return to your fort frequently. Thank goodness for portals. The reason is simple. The Arcanum, your skill station with its enticing set of skills to unlock and upgrade. By completing quests and killing monsters, you will earn skill points to unlock new skills. I must mention the Reliquary, the device where you can craft the mighty Relic weapons, if you've gathered all the resources that it takes. Relic weapons are mythical weapons that level up, even if they aren't effectively being used in combat. They have a short active time and a large cooldown. Oddly enough, I don't consider that my Relic weapon gave me superpowers as the developer said but it may be a case of the right weapon for the right player. Torchlight Frontiers is setting itself up to be a hoarder's dream. There's tons of loot and your pet will unremittingly run to town to sell stuff, not to mention the gear that you'll want to save in your stash. Finding legendary items and crafting relic weapons is surely going to be one of the goals in this game. Lifebound items are planned and these will surely ramp up the challenge as you will lose them if you die. Tread carefully when you have these equipped. 
On the other hand, I have no clue about what is being planned for Endgame. Apparently, PvP isn't going to be a major focus in Torchlight Frontiers, but I don't see the game existing without some sort of player versus player action. The Mapworks device will probably play a huge part in Endgame. I've also heard complaints about the colorful and cartoonish art style. Apparently, those critics never played the two previous Torchlight games as the visuals are very similar. If something, Torchlight Frontier's graphics look a lot more sophisticated. Personally, I quite like it, and it makes for a striking change from the grim atmosphere of Path of Exile. Torchlight Frontiers has many things going for it. For one, the way that Extra Games is using player feedback is remarkable. The horizontal progression system will give this game an impressive scope, as each new release will act as a brand new zone for every player, not just for endgame. With several dozens of hours for each frontier, I can only imagine the scope of Torchlight Frontiers in a couple of years. If everything goes well, that is, the free-to-play business model should grant it a very respectable player base. And if everything feels fair in the cash shop side of things, I can anticipate a bright future for Torchlight Frontiers.